On Campus is brought to you by the UWI Mona, inspiring excellence, producing leaders. On Campus, a weekly look at what's happening on the Mona campus of the University of the West Indies. On Campus today, the spotlight is on the Cassava Project, being spearheaded by the Faculty of Science and Technology. There's our regular campus calendar, but first, UE News. In light of the Government of Jamaica's announcement to resume face-to-face -face modality across the education sector, the University of the West Indies Mona Campus will begin offering current and incoming students of the UWI Mona Campus face-to-face -face classes in the 2022-2023 academic year. The UWI Mona Campus Registrar, Dr. Donovan Stanbury, advised incoming and current students that the Mona Campus will resume face-to-face -face classes starting with summer school in June 2022 and all classes in semester one of the new academic year in September 2022. He indicated that programs that were being delivered online or in a blended mode prior to COVID-19 will continue in the online or blended modality. In addition, a limited amount of lectures may be delivered in an online or blended modality. Students, he said, will be advised by their respective faculties or program coordinators of the courses that will continue in these modalities. Notwithstanding these exceptions, a substantial amount of instruction will be done via face-to-face -face delivery. Concerning campus accommodation, students will be accommodated on all halls of residence of the Mona campus in the new academic year. However, all students who wish to reside on hall must be vaccinated. Dr. Stanbury said, while there is no vaccination requirement to attend face-to-face -face classes, students are strongly encouraged to get vaccinated as this is best for keeping all members of the community safe. Dr. Stanbury cautioned that in light of the most recent global issue, the UWI Mona campus will keep the community abreast of any new developments as, although COVID-19 cases have reduced considerably at this time, the situation could worsen in a short space of time. We therefore urge our students to continue with the practice of hand sanitizing and mask wearing indoors as we return to face-to-face. The UWI Mona, through the Faculty of Science and Technology, is playing its part in achieving food security for Jamaica in several ways, the cassava project being just one. The research project focuses on identifying opportunities for the utilization of locally grown carbohydrate-rich foods to partially replace imported sources of carbohydrates. This week, Public Relations Officer at the Mona Campus, Camille Reed, speaks with Dr. Ian Thompson, lead researcher for the Cassava Project, lecturer in food processing and chemistry, and program coordinator for the MSc program in food and agro-processing technology in the Department of Chemistry, and Annalise Aiken, UWI graduate who is now team lead for the food pilot plant at the Scientific Research Council. She will be speaking to them on the updated potential of cassava and the cassava project. Now, my first question to you is, where does cassava come from? Is it native to Jamaica? Well, cassava originated in South America. And in fact, so it's not native to Jamaica, but was brought here by our prior um, inhabitants. It is a root crop and unlike, say, another root crop, potato, um, this crop has to be propagated by the sticks. So if you plant the root, it won't grow. It has to be propagated vegetatively by the sticks. And yes, it is now widely consumed in Jamaica. And as you may well realize, you know, we have um, bami, which is quite popular staple um, consumed around this time with, with fish. Annalise, your project is the cassava project. Tell me about that, um, what you found in your research. So we know that the cassava root is, is very popular. It's a climate resilient crop. So it is, it is widely used, especially in our region. Um, but, you know, taking a different perspective and looking at the plant in its entirety, I decided to look at the leaves because they're actually used in some cultures and eaten as, as a vegetable. 
So my project was undertaken to investigate the protein content, the amino acid profile and food functionality of proteins from the cassava leaves. So we looked specifically at some Jamaican and Colombian varieties, which were collected from the UE experimental plot that was set up in St. Elizabeth. What are, are, are you saying then that we underutilize the crop and probably we should look into using the leaves in some of our salads? <laughs> Absolutely, perhaps not in its raw state, um, but the findings, you know, we definitely are underutilizing the leaves. The leaves are the bulk of the, the waste after you harvest the root. So it's definitely an untapped protein source. What the study found was that the crude protein content of cassava leaves taken at the maturity of the root was between 25 and 29 percent, which is very high for a leaf. Um, most leaves bring in a protein content in the teens, you know, about 13 to 15 percent. So this is something that was significant. Um, there was also a study of the amino acids. We quantified 18 different amino acids and the amino acid profile of the same leaves are, are complementary to the human diet. When we think about amino acids, these are going to be the building blocks of proteins. And there are some amino acids which the human body cannot synthesize. So we are reliant on dietary sources of these amino acids, which are essential amino acids. And what was also found was that these essential amino acids make up almost half of the total amino acid content in the leaves. So there is definitely value for supplementation to the human diet with this, with this byproduct of root production that is really just, you know, made, made to waste. That was Annalise Aiken, UWI graduate, now team lead for the Food Pilot Plant at the Scientific Research Council, and Dr. Ian Thompson, lecturer in food processing and chemistry in the Department of Chemistry, speaking about the cassava crop and its uses. We'll hear more from them after the break, but first, let's take a look at our campus calendar. Students and parents are being advised that applications for students who wish to start their academic journey with the UWI Mona in September 2022 are now open. Students can log on to the UWI website for more information on the hundreds of degree programs on offer. Visit our website at www.mona.uwi.edu forward slash apply. The UWI, your place to shine. We now return to Dr. Ian Thompson, lecturer in food processing and chemistry in the Department of Chemistry, and Annalise Aiken, UWI graduate and now team lead for the food pilot plant at the Scientific Research Council as they tell us more about the many uses of the cassava crop and the cassava project. Dr. Thompson, can you tell me about um, your side of the research, uh, some of your findings? Well, as you may know, the cassava project, which we had established um, in St. Elizabeth, was primarily to look at the production and processing of the root into, into flour. But the opportunity which this presented is not only about producing flour, but rather about reducing our dependence on imported wheat flour. You know, it's a little known fact that the um, cassava flour not, is not only gluten-free, but pro is a rich source of carbohydrates for the diet. Our diet, you know, diet, we actually need between 50 and 65% um, energy from, from carbohydrates. As a result, you know, we conceive that we could have enormous foreign exchange savings by simply supplying um, this flow to our population um, and hence improve our food and nutrition security. And especially now, you know, when the world is under, you know, a number of crises, you know, it is important that we look to ourselves to, to meet our to meet the nutritional requirements of our population. 
Are there other medicinal uses for cassava that we're looking at under this cassava project? Or is that something that we can look forward to in the future? We have, in fact, begun and you know are about to complete research on some of the beneficial properties of the starch. So there is a project that we're working on, which is looking at um, starch, modified starch, and how we can actually use these modified starches in a, in a wide variety of applications, including um, as gelling agents and as well as in you know med some medicinal applications. So I think it's fair to say that we have only begun to tap the surface of the potential for this crop. Um, we're in Lent. We're about two weeks or a week and a half into Lent. And I know a lot of people have sworn off um, bread, flour, rice, those things. And I just want to give you a, a, an opportunity to recommend or some alternatives. And I know cassava might be one. Uh, how they can use cassava in this period of Lent that they meet, maybe of other starches that we're normally used to eating. So everybody is familiar and, and fairly comfortable with Bami. So I think Bami is going to be a top pick, especially because, you know, many people are now not eating, you know, red meat or poultry and they're going to fish. So the perfect pair is always going to be steam fish and Bami but also encouraging people to try out the cassava flowers and see how you can use cassava flour in lieu of, of wheat flour. And if you're feeling a little more adventurous and you have access to a cassava plant, consider picking some of the younger leaves, rinsing it, you know, preparing it the same way you would prepare callaloo, where you, you shred it, you rinse it, and then you steam it down. It's something worth thinking about if you are a little more experimental. You've just heard Annalise Aiken, UWI graduate and now team lead for the food pilot plant at the Scientific Research Council, and Dr. Ian Thompson, lecturer in food processing and chemistry in the Department of Chemistry, speaking about the many uses of the cassava crop and the cassava project. For more information about the project, visit the faculty website at mona.uwi.edu forward slash FST or call 876-977-1875 or WhatsApp the FST at 876-552-4691. And that's on campus for today. To stay connected to the UWI Mona, home of the Pelicans, or to apply to UWI Mona, visit us online at www.mona.uwi.edu or like our official Facebook page at www.facebook.com forward slash UWI Mona. The University of the West Indies, inspiring excellence, producing leaders. If you have suggestions for this program, please contact the Marketing, Recruitment and Communications Office, University of the West Indies, Mona Kingston 7, or email us at marketing.communications at uwimona.edu.jm. On Campus was produced by Camille Reed. I am Sean Mockien. On Campus is a production of the Marketing, Recruitment and Communications Office of the University of the West Indies Mona and is recorded in the Media Lab of the University Archives at the UWI Regional Headquarters.